Hello. Um, I just got done watching a video on YouTube where a guy's gonna tell you how to quit Kratom and but he's gonna charge you two hundred dollars, but right now you can get a deal of fifty bucks. Um you pay this guy fifty bucks and he's gonna send you information on, on how to quit Kratom. And and I just think, man, what a jerk move, you know. So I would like to tell you how to do it for free. And and with experience of dunning it or doing it, dunning it, duh, doing it, <laughs> and uh, and and just I mean to take advantage of people um, that may feel they have a problem with kratom and and are going to charge you money to tell them probably something that's just total BS anyway. Um, something about that isn't right. And before I get into detail on this video, you uh, I guess I need to make a disclaimer. One, I'm not a doctor. Anything in this video is, is not intended to treat, cure, or mitigate any disease. Um, it is strictly my opinion. Um, yeah, let's, let's get that. And Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. So back to the point. Hopefully that will keep the video up. Um, you know how we're getting censored all the time. So the, uh, but yeah, I had a quick Kratom. And, and it's really not as hard as you think. First, you need to know, um, or you need to want to. That, that's the number one thing. If you don't want to do something, you're not going to do it. So first you have to want to, and then you have to make up your mind that this is what I want, you know, and, and ask yourself, why do I want to do that? And and come up with a reason, whatever it may be, you know, and, and think about the reason, well, why did you take Kratom to begin with? Um, you know, a lot of people different, have different reasons. Uh, you know, some say it helps them with pain. Um, it's... Uh, a lot of people, I'm not going to say it's a great way because it's just my opinion, but a lot of people use it to get away from opiates. I know when I went to a doctor and, and at one time I was addicted to opiates, I had hurt my back. I go to a doctor and basically it's like, here, have this opiate addiction. That'll fix it. Well, it didn't. It about ruined my life. And, and you know, later on, I'm like, I'm realizing that I'm addicted to this Oxycontin. I can't get away from it. I go to my doctor and it's like, doctor, uh, how do I quit? Oh, you want to quit? Well, let me just rip this script up and there you go. You quit. Well, it didn't work that way. I, I felt like I was dying. And even after I got through withdrawals, I felt like I wanted to die for, shoot, almost two years, you know. Um, and then I found Kratom and it, it calmed that part of the brain that was causing me problem from the opiate depression. So, but regardless of your reason for why you took it, um and your reason for wanting to quit, it's a noble idea to have an all natural life. And you gotta ask yourself, well, can I accomplish this without Kratom? And, and sure you can, but what would be the consequences of it? I mean, if you're really suffering from pain, if Kratom is helping you, weigh those odds. Uh, one thing for sure though, besides just quitting Kratom, reducing your amount of Kratom is very beneficial too. To take the least amount possible to get the result that you're wanting to get. Because um, by doing that, it, you're, you're better off anyway. You take too much Kratom, it's going to affect you. It can be abused, you know. Um, but I found the effects of a small amount are much better. It's a stimulant. You're going to feel more energetic. Um, and then you have to ask yourself, was well, this accomplishing what I wanted to do when I took Kratom to begin with? And so how to quit. Now, there's several different methods on how to quit Kratom. Uh, one for a person that has a lot of self-control, one for a person that doesn't have any self-control. And that's something you're going to have to get a grip with if you're going to want to quit. Um, but quitting can be easy. Now, let me start with one method. One method would be to taper down. And here's a, a mistake a lot of people often make when they're trying to taper down is that okay today i'll take this amount tomorrow i'll take this amount less the next day i'll take this amount less it doesn't work that way so so what you have to do is is okay say say you're taking 10 capsules or or, or you can put it in grams you're taking 10 grams right okay i, I want to taper so now today i'm going to take nine grams and I'm going to continue to take nine grams for three to four days minimum. All right, because it's going to take your, your brain those three or four days to adjust to that little bit lower amount. But you want to make it ever so slightly so that you don't even know you're adjusting to it. You follow me? 
And then after that third, fourth, maybe in fifth days, if you want to be more comfortable about it, then take a little bit more away. Now, for some people, that's hard to do. It, it sounds simple, but for some people, it could be hard to do. And so another method of tapering would be to take, like, say, if you're taking, we'll go with that 10 grams again. Say you're taking 10 capsules or 10 grams. Okay, I'm going to take half of those now. I'm going to wait 30 minutes and take the other half. Okay, and you're going to continue to do that method every time you take a dose. And and, and you need to time this, too. It's very good to, to have a watch, use your cell phone, because you need to be consistent on the amount of time you waited in between taking it. You follow me? In between your use. Don't use the word dose. Uh, in between your use of Kratom, you need to make sure that everything's very consistent. That's very important. And, and along with being consistent, too, you want to purchase enough Kratom to get you through this process at one time uh, and being from one batch. Um, and you want to use a vendor that uh, not only tests for like heavy metals and, and does the bio test, it's good to have one that actually tests for mitragonic content. And, and I'm not going to make this video an advertisement, but I know somebody who does, somebody will throw it in the comments and, and that'll be that. So, but yeah, you, if you get that, you know, the, the vendor will have it written right on the bag. This is how much mitragonic or mitragonic to potato, potato, um, this kratom you have contains because you want to be that you want that to be consistent too. You want to make sure that you're using the same consistency of strength as you get through this process of tapering. Because if you don't, okay, you you got a, a weak batch today, and you're gonna take you know eight capsules of it because you took two away already, and then you switch up to another kratom that contains more metrogena. Well, those eight capsules might have equal taking 14 capsules now you're not being consistent on the tapering that's very important so you know i don't know you know, i'm not gonna know well how much you take but kind of you if you plan this out with a calendar that's very helpful too you know buy your paper calendar say okay today i'm gonna do this amount four days from then i'm gonna take this much away all right but back to method two i'm, I'm a lady d i skipped around so you're, you say you take half of that use, and you're going to wait 30 minutes to take the other half. Okay? Now, and you can do this very slowly, or you can even do it a little faster, but you could say, wait, you want to go slowly. You wait three days, and now you're going to take half of that, and you're going to wait an hour to take the other half. You follow me? And over time, you're going to stretch that out until that other half ends up being when you would have took your other use anyway. And, you know, Kratom typically, depending on your metabolism, some of the high metabolism, uh, their, their Kratom effects are going to last four hours. Uh, some of you a little bit slower, it might last six hours. Um, everybody's different, too. So you, you got to know your differences, and you got to plan accordingly. And, and then, uh, so as you stretch this out until it ends up being four hours later, well, what have you done? You see what I mean? You basically took a whole use out, but you took it slowly. You, you follow that? So you're stretching that out, and, and you did it till it's four hours later before you took the other half. Well, now you can get rid of one use a day. You, you follow me? Um, it, it Rewind that and play it again if you don't. But that is another way of tapering that you won't hear about. It, and and it's, it's one I came up with, and I actually still use it. Now, see, I have no intentions of quitting. Um, I have a very bad back. Kratom is a good alternative for me. Not saying it is for you, but it's a great alternative for me. Um, and I can live a normal life again. I'm not addicted to opiates that were just ruining my life. And, and the main thing is that I don't suffer from the depression I had when I was on opiates. You see what I mean? I'm the happiest person you could imagine. I, I'm just, I'm super happy. Um, so for me, Kratom doesn't affect me in that negative way. And so I won't have a reason for quitting. But what I will do is, okay, so I've been taking this amount of Kratom for such a long time that it doesn't have the same effect it did when I first started. 
you follow me? So one of my methods was to take half my use now, wait 30 minutes, take the other half, stretch it out a little bit, you know what I mean? And then go back to my regular use of Kratom, or not even my full amount, just a little more, and I have the effect again. You see what I mean? That's one of the methods I use. And I use several. Sometimes it's good to switch things up. One is just to switch strains. Um, switching strains can do it. And then if you're dealing with a vendor that actually um, is giving you the strength of it, the mitrogeno the mitrogeno level, nitrogen level in the Kratom, the strength of the Kratom, if you have that number, then you can use that number. So, hey, I'm going to get one that's 0.9%. I'm going to use this at my normal level. But I've also purchased this one that's 1.4% uh, or 2%. It is possible. We've even had 2.4%. Um, and, and I think we got a number the other day that was even higher. I, I have to verify that, though. And, uh, and really, like this time of year right now, um, you know, we're in November. But it's, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, September through... February are the best times to harvest or import Kratom. It's the wet season. Dry season, you're going to have lower numbers. You're right. Kratom will never be a consistent product like tobacco. And, and there's several reasons for it. Because um, even if you were to try and grow it like tobacco, where you do one crop a year, you harvest it at the same time of year, every year, you can make a consistent tobacco. Uh, you're not going to do with that Kratom. Well, one kratom is an evergreen. It, it grows really year-round. But even if you grew it once a year and harvest it just like tobacco, right? Okay, it's the strength now. It's consistent on that day, right? But as a period of a year to even two years, the levels of that is, or metrogen is going to drop. Yeah, I mean, there's no way around it. You can vacuum pack it. But the nature of the alkaloid, it's constantly doing one of two things. It's either off-gassing, even though it's in a vacuum-packed gap bag. As soon as you open the bag, whatever is off-gas out of it is gone. Poof, it's gone. If you leave a bag open, I mean, the way to prove this is take, take really good kratom, leave it out in the air for a week, and try it again. It won't be so good. It off-gasses. And then another thing that happens with kratom is metrogene will turn into 7 hydroxy metrogen or metrogana or potato or potato and and so and that's what you that's what you really don't want uh, it, out of those two alkaloids 7 hydroxy or or just regular metrogen you're out of those two if there's one that's more addictive it's the 7 hydroxy and and what is that well that's it's the metrogena becoming oxidized basically like rusting you, if something's rusty, it becomes oxidized. It's getting old. And, and so some of this happens naturally in the plant, but really if you, if you were to pick a leaf off a tree, unless it had a brown spot on it, it would have very little of that 7-hydroxy. So back to getting a vendor that tests every batch of their kratom. That's important. Not just every batch, every brick. Okay? Because, you know, uh, well, they got these GMP... Not certification, it's called qualify. There is no GMP certified Kratom vendor in the United States. It's not going to happen. So I got this thing where the AK will make you GMP qualified, right? Means not much other than somebody's looked at it and said, yeah, you're doing your Kratom the way it should be, packaging it, whatever, if you were able to get it. And, and uh, but anyway, if you, you know, but the GMP thing though, so they get 100 bricks of Kratom in. They only have to test half of it. Well, you know, all these bricks didn't come out the same tree in the same place on Earth. You know what I mean? So, okay, you tested half of it. And then the worst way to test is if you just take a little spoonful out of each one and mix it all together. And, and I'll tell you why. That's, that's the worst way to do it. One, if you did have a bad brick, you don't know which one it is, right? And then the other is if, like, you're doing heavy metals testing. Well, you could have one that's like a total brick of lead, but when you dilute it with all the others, what do you got? 
Oh, it's low in lead. Maybe. Maybe not. You see what I mean? So, so that's part's important. You want a consistent kratom, and and you want to know what the levels are. You want one that's very low in seven hydroxy. Um, the key there is freshness. Get a vendor that imports weekly, doesn't import a shipping container, repackage it, sell it to head shops throughout the year, because you don't know what you got. You don't. Even if they were to bribe you with test results, you don't know what you got. I mean, don't kid yourself. And then some of these vendors are buying Kratom from somebody else that they know has really good Kratom. They get the test results, and then they hold them up in the air and goes, yeah, this is our Kratom. It's... It's like, oh man, it's annoying. This, to the Kratom industry is annoying. It needs to be regulated. And the big problem is it doesn't need to be regulated here. Well, no, it does need to be regulated here. It also needs to be regulated where it's growing. You know, you could import Kratom. If you don't know where it came from, you still don't know what you got. You don't. Uh, and, and so, but back to the thing. How are we going to quit Kratom? Okay. Now, lastly, I'm going to tell you of another way to either reduce the volume of kratom you're taking or to quit the kratom you're taking. All right. There's a product called stem. Stem is made from just the stem of the leaf and not the leaf itself. It has a very unique quality. Now, stem is used in several fashions. Sometimes stem is mixed in with kratom to make a different product. Um... And, and stem is neat because you can mix kratom or you can mix stem with kratom and it actually has the effect of making it last longer. Uh, but at the same time, it isn't as strong. But the way it does it, you don't know that. It's weird. It make, it'll make the kratom, it'll give kratom a different effect. Sometimes that you used in making different products. You know, one of the main conception is, or misconception is people think, oh, there's a million different strains of kratom. No, no, there's not. There's a kratom plant. And depending on what you do with that plant, when you harvest it, the age of the leaf when it's harvested, how old or mature the, the, the tree itself is, and the mixing of all these different things makes different products. All right? And another part of it is like, okay, Borneo, Bali. Those are just locations. It's still a plant. A, a, a green Bali is the same thing as a... A green Borneo, except for the fact that the dirt's different. Climate isn't really much different between those two, but but the conditions are different. It makes the product different. It makes it a new product. You see what I'm saying? But there is not a million different types of trees of kratom like you would see in, say, the marijuana industry, where those are strains that have been selected and, and altered to make a new product. You, you follow me? Um, and then things like red. Well, you know, there's more than one type of red. I'm not saying red Borneo. There's more than one type of red Borneo. There's real red, right? And then there's made red, where you take a bunch of green leaf, you stick it in a bag for two weeks, the leaf turns red, and now you got this brown colored kratom. You know what I mean? Red colored kratom. That don't mean it's real red. Real red is actually green. If you were to look at it in the bag, it's actually green. And, and it's just the stem of... The leaf that's red and then really good kratom has the stems pulled you know that that's the difference if you get kratom that has a little grit in it or it has fiber in it, it it's because they didn't pull the stems out a really smooth kratom you pull the stems out because of the effect that what stem does all right so back to quitting i got off track there but back to quitting if you get a product stem a good vendor will have it almost nobody has it in the united states a good vendor will You'll find out in the comments where to find one. But the uh, um, stem is widely used to reduce a person's tolerance for kratom. I mean, it's it. no matter who you are, I don't care if you're King Kong, you use kratom the same fashion every day, day after day, you're going to get a tolerance to it. And then you're like anything else, you're just kind of taking it to feel normal, but it doesn't have that great benefit that it had before, Right. To, so the way the Indonesians do it, and, and all of, not just Indonesia, all of South Asia, the way STEM is used is you get to that point where Kratom just isn't really doing anything for you anymore, right? So say you take 10 grams or 10 capsules of Kratom, you would replace 20% of that with STEM. 
So in capsules, well, really probably you take seven capsules. And capsules are, well, a good capsule is going to be right at 0.7 gram or, or 7 milligram. And, and, but a lot of vendors have 0.5 grams. And it's like, you squeeze it, it's full of air. Talk about something that'll piss you off, you know? And, uh, and so, the, uh, so really at 20%, you, if you were using 10 capsules, you would have seven capsules of your normal kratom, and then you would replace it with three capsules of stem, or if you're doing grams, then you would just replace 20% um, of your normal use with stem. Do that for two weeks. I mean, you don't ac actually have to do it for two weeks. Two weeks, I can guarantee you, if you go back to your normal use of kratom, you're going to be like, wow, I remember this. Yes, I feel great again. You know what I mean? And and it's it's just such a unique quality to stem. You know, it's it's right there next to the leaf, but has a totally different um, quality to it in what it does. Now you can also use this effect with stem to your advantage. So say if you're like, okay, I want to quit kratom. You know what I mean? Replace twenty percent with stem. Do that for four days so that you get used to that. I recommend a week but it, the minimum four days so that, you you know, just like, like say if you quit opiates, right? The withdrawal, the most awful part of a withdrawal, and I'm not talking about the depression that comes after, the most awful part of the withdrawal is three to four days, right? It takes your brain that long to get used to the shock of what you just did to it, you see? And so the same with Kratom. So you, you wait that fourth day, now, you keep that 20% of the stem, but then take away 10, 20% of the normal kratom again and do that again. So use it as a part of the tapering process because the stem will make what you did take last longer. You, you follow me? And, and uh, so that's another method. The last, the last method is let's quit. Well, you might not have a problem you might have a problem because I don't care. Like for instance, you know, I used to be in the Coast Guard. When I was in the Coast Guard, I was a coffee addict, right? And even with coffee, this is true. If you're a guy that's sitting there drinking 10 cups of coffee all day, you don't even drink water. You're just drinking coffee. Yeah, I did that for a while. I don't anymore, but I did when I was in the Coast Guard. Just everybody did it, you know? And and then in my case, I got on leave and went home to stay at mom's house for a, a weekend and mom didn't have any coffee. Dude, I was, didn't feel good. It was very similar. You know what I mean? By noon, I had a splitting headache. Um, and then I drank a Pepsi Cola to get some caffeine or Coca-Cola. Don't really remember what it was. Might have been generic. Don't matter. Had caffeine in it. And man, the head started, headache started subsiding, and buddy, I just started pounding it, and I made sure I went to the store that afternoon and got me some coffee, you know, and, and the same thing with coffee, it was the thing you had to taper off of if you wanted to quit coffee altogether. The addiction's the same. It doesn't matter what you do, um, it's going to take those three days to adjust. You follow me? And, and so once you know that, once you know that, okay, no matter how I do this, I do need that three or four days to adjust, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You could do it so slow that you never even notice you quit Kratom. And then when you get down to the point that you're taking a gram or less, you can pretty much just quit. It may be, you might have some uncomfortableness, but I mean, a lot of people won't, won't feel anything from it. I mean, just so you get a gram or less, you're going to be good. And then also to be able to just use a gram or two, and get the desired effect you want, it's going to be a more pleasant and more beneficial effect than if you're trying to pound 20 capsules. You see what I'm saying? Because you're, it's going to be more of a stimulant. You're going to be more energetic. You're going to be more ambitious. You're going to want to go do things where you start pounding 20 capsules and you start kind of getting wobble-eyed. Well, you're not really good for much. You know what I mean? And, and, and if one of the reasons why you took it to begin with is to get away from opiates, well, the idea is to be functional. You, you see what I mean? To, to be better than you were, because we know what you were on opiates. It wasn't good. It's a junkie. I was. Not ashamed to say it. I was an absolute junkie. You know, started out with Percocet, had to take more, had to take more. Next thing you know, it's 20 milligram Oxycontin. 
A year later, I'm taking 80s. You know, it, it was just awful. So, yeah, I, I'll never want to go back to that. Creighton was a better alternative for me. But like I said, in this video, this is all my opinions. And I have to say that. You know what I mean? I have to say this is my opinions. To be fair, I mean, that's fair. And, and then also, you know, anything that's pro Kratom kind of gets taken down. I mean, the, the people that control information don't want you to know that anything natural is going to be beneficial because it's more beneficial for them that their buddies that make a ton of money and pay for advertising get their product out front. So we know what it is. You know, we know what it is. But but to be fair, yep, none of this, uh, none of this video is to, made to treat or cure a disease. Um, it was strictly my opinion. And, and Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Have a great day.